discovery, sometimes twice a day basis. Um, we have, I think, um, gotten to a place where we are um, closer to a recommendation. We've actually shared information with our board yesterday um, based upon feedback that we received from this group, feedback from parents, teachers, and others um, in our community. So I want to take a few minutes and share some information with the group, and then we'll do like we did previously and open up for discussion. Does that seem like a plan Does that work for everyone? Okay. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Am I already able to do that? Uh, looks like I am. And do we see the information? It looks like we do. Are we good? All right, so um, same format um, as before, but wanted to give you some updates from um, July the 14th. That was the last time that, that we actually uh, met. And I also want to thank any of the attendees that are, that are with us this evening as well. One of the things I do want to do is share with you some updated information that we received. We did not have the information at our last meeting. This is in regards to our teacher survey. Um, we had about 328 responses, which equates to about 89% of our teachers did respond to our survey. And we were trying to gauge um, several things from our teachers. A lot of it had to do with uh, health and safety. Um, as you can imagine, that is a, um, a major concern. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the first question speaks to maintaining uh, a minimum of six feet between students um, and seats and desks, if you will. So you'll see that the majority um, of respondents did indicate that that was extremely important. And I want to mention that the scale goes from one to five, one being not important, five being extremely important. So you can see um, how that actually fell out based, from, based off of the responses that we received. Also, the second question speaks to having hand washing stations um, within our building or hand sanitizing available. Again, large percentage of our teachers are saying that, it, that that's extremely important for them. Um, Third question dealt with temperature checks for students and staff. Um, you can see that again, a large portion of uh, teachers felt as though that was extremely important. And I'll touch on that a little bit later uh, in the presentation, but we've had lots of conversation around temperature checks. Um, also the Chester County Health Department um, following or implementing their guidelines for cleaning all of our buildings. Again, extremely important for our teachers. Um, Requiring students to wear masks or other PPE equipment are still extremely important. We have a small population of folks who rated it as a four, but overwhelmingly it is extremely important to our teachers. Uh, requiring staff to wear masks or other PPE equipment, about the same percentages, again, extremely important based upon what our teachers are indicating so, to us. To me. Um, also, we have uh, enforcing a 30 minute duty-free lunch. This is a part of the teacher's contract, and so this is still important to teachers. Um, and you'll see again, extremely important to make sure that that is in place. And that was a question that we asked primarily because at one point in time, we were talking about um, students eating lunch in the actual classroom. Um, so that's why that question was actually posed to teachers. Um, reducing class size to allow for social distancing again, extremely important to, uh, to our staff members. Students remaining in classrooms or staying with the same staff member throughout the day, a lot of the research points to the fact that you should try to keep students in small, smaller cohorts or smaller groups. So you'll see that that's a little mixed and um, based upon that information, we dug a little bit further and that is somewhat guided by the level, meaning elementary, middle or high, but the advice is still to maintain to the greatest extent um, feasible or possible um, maintaining students in cohorts. And then where we talk about policies that would be put in place um, to ensure that staff members who may have um, underlying health conditions or are at risk um, are able to either work offline, um, work online or um, synchronously with our students. And again, you'll see that we had a high percentage of um, staff members who thought that that was extremely important as well. 
So those are um, the questions that were asked um, of our staff, and I would did want to share that information with you because that has also helped to form some of our um, guiding thoughts and principles, if you will, as it relates to the recommendation that's been made. We also have frequently asked questions that are on our website. So all of the questions that we have received to date have been answered um, and are available on the website. Everything is under the reopening of schools tab. Um, we also had lots of questions around what to do if someone is identified or there is a suspect case of COVID. So again, we are following the Chester County Health Department's guidance. Um, there's an actual form that we would complete and fill out um provide that to the county health department and they the county health department then begins the conversation with the individual who is suspected to have um, COVID and then they then advise us on the type of communication or what to include in the communication to families as well as what are some next steps so we are following this process um, that's outlined here the um, Chester County Health Department also will be conducting any contact tracing that uh, is required. So um, this is the process that we, will, that we will be utilizing in terms of identified or potential identified cases. Also, there was a lots of conversation since we last met in terms of screening. What are we going to do? I believe there was a question from someone in this group that talked about are we taking temperatures? Um, so based upon that input, feedback from the committee, questions that have been raised since that time, this is our daily student and staff health and wellness checklist, um, if you will, that we are um, encouraging and that this information will be widespread throughout the district. So there's several steps. So before leaving home, there are certain things that we want to have happen or parents to complete. Um, on the way to school, we're talking about what should happen with students. They should have on a uh, facial mask and students are encouraged to wear the mask. Um, arriving at school, what happens? So teachers and staff will be visually observing the students. Um, we have um, also indicated that we will be doing random checks throughout the day. So it's not just not in the morning, it will be throughout the day. You'll see that in the temperature check section. And then all school staff will have their temperatures checked upon entering. Uh, there will be a device in schools that will allow for that to occur. And then in the classroom, we are just going to have a simple three question uh, type of um, Q&A that teachers would be um, asking um, of students and in the event that there's a response that's received from a child that would warrant um, some further uh, investigation, then that student would um, be referred to the nurse or we would have the nurse um, actually work with that student. So this is something that we put into place primarily because of some of the feedback that we received. Um, in terms of safety measures, measures or safety checks. We've also um, identified uh, and developed a visitor screening protocol so that when um, visitors are coming to the building and we have um, actually also identified essential visitors. So we are limiting visits to schools. And so the thinking is that essential visitors would be people like a parent if you have a meeting for an individual um, education plan or IEP plan if you have a meeting for that. If you are providing or delivering um, obviously materials or resources that schools need to educate students, those would be some of our essential visitors. However, there is a visitor screen that would actually take place. These are um, standard questions that um, were provided by the CDC and or the Chester County Department of Health. So these are questions that would be asked of individuals. Um, in the event that an individual does respond in the affirmative or yes, uh, we would be asking the um, individual not to enter the building. Um, however, before leaving, we would make sure that we're able to communicate with that person via phone to try to still assist them. If the person does not um, answer in the affirmative, then that person would be allowed in the building to conduct the essential business that they are there to actually conduct. So these, this signage and information will be throughout all of our buildings within the uh, school district. Additional um, research and findings, um, the, most of you probably know the Pennsylvania um, Department of Health has issued um, guidance and uh, a mandate, if you will, for wearing face masks. And so we are following um, this mandate. Um, and within this section, it 
specifically speaks to where face coverings are required. And so one of the items speaks to outdoors um, and unable to consistently remain a distance of six feet from individuals who are not members of their household. That is a requirement for a face mask. It goes on to say any um, indoor location where members of the public are generally permitted. Um, and then it also speaks to if you are waiting or driving or waiting for a ride on uh, public transportation or operating public transportation, uh, these are the conditions in which face masks are required. So again, we are following the guidance that's been provided. This is a document that we have to submit along with our health and safety plan that we provide to, um, to the state. I do want to um, share with you, though, that the Pennsylvania State Education Association um, has urged or has reached out to the governor, if you will, um, to begin planning for online instruction. Um, we have not received any additional guidance as a result of this urging, if you will. And so our plan that I will be sharing with you in a moment, um, we're still moving forward with that. Um, and as we receive information regarding this um, urging, if you are from PS, PSEA, we will modify our plans accordingly. Um, and then we also have a responsibility still to ensure that there is 180 days of instruction um, being provided to students, be it via a remote mechanism or um, in person. So this is a document that the Department of Education is requiring the school districts complete and submit to them prior to the beginning of school. Um, and so this will be provided to uh, the Department of Education prior to um, day one. So those are some updates since we last met. Um, I felt as though it was important to also highlight, if you will, some of our overarching principles. Some of these I've already spoken to, but again, it's looking at the physically distancing space. Um, if people are sick, asking them to stay home. Um, rigorously cleaning and disinfecting our buildings, and we will continue to um, make sure that we are providing and posting signage as needed through within, within and throughout all of our buildings. Um, obviously, we're going to continue to provide lunch for students for breakfast as well as, um, as I said, lunch. Um, we're going to continue to practice um, distancing. And um, obviously there will be certain schools who have procedures that may look different than others because each school building has a different layout. But the baseline or the frame, if you will, will be these guidelines that we have established and included within our health and safety plan. I do wanna highlight in the health and safety plan, which is actually a requirement or a document that's been provided by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. It specifically speaks to various components that need to be completed and include it within the plan. So right now I'm just going to, um, I just wanna highlight a few things in the plan. We actually had to indicate um, the members of the planning committee. And then it also states though in their plan, it says that in the following tables, and I'm gonna show you one of them in a moment, um, an asterisk denotes a mandatory element of the plan. All other requirements that are coming from DPE are highly encouraged to the maximum extent feasible. And that's new wording. Um, maximum extent feasible that has been added to um, the guidance that we've received from the state. So I want to go to a specific um, requirement that we have and let me just blow that up just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. So this speaks to a requirement it says that classroom slash learning space um, should allow for six feet of separation among students and staff throughout the day to the maximum extent feasible. So that wording has changed. It used to be, I believe, to the maximum extent possible. And so now we're saying to the maximum extent feasible. Um, so we're implementing what the state has provided us um, with as far as uh, terminology and language for our health and safety plan. So um, I did want to share that with, with this group as well. And so the recommendation based upon all of that guidance, all of the updates that we're continuing to receive is that we have an AABB instructional day. And what that means is that um, students will come to school, AA students will be in school on Monday and Tuesday, BB students will be in school on Thursday and Friday. Wednesday becomes a day of providing student support remotely. 
We will also, um, in time, at certain times, provide and have professional development, and cleaning will continuously be going on within our buildings. Um, so that is the structure. That same structure would apply for students in grade seven and eight, as well as students in grade nine through 12. Um, special education students, we are ensuring that they have a free and appropriate public education. So we are looking at IEPs, individual student needs. And for some of those students, it's, it's going to be best that those students are in school for four days. So that would be the AA as well as the DB days. So we are currently going through and identifying who those students are working with schools and we will be having one-on-one -on -one communications with those families to ensure that they are aware of how we um, and William Penn want to assist and make sure that we are providing um, faith um, to those students. So this is the plan that we are recommending. Another reason why we went move forward with this plan is because it allows families to know what days students are in and what days students are working remotely for daycare purposes. That was also um, a request that came from different individuals. So with this plan, um, the only real difference between these two options, option one and option two, is the start date of school. So in option one, you'll see that the start date uh, begins on um, it would be September the 9th for students. Um, that would actually be the first day. And then you would have, I'm sorry, did I pull up the wrong one? Hold on one second. All right, so this is option two in which the first day of school would be September the 14th. So this is what you'll see here, September the 14th is the actual first day of school for students. So you'll see group AA, group BB, um, and the other calendar, the first day of school would be September the 9th. So that's the real difference. And what we've asked the board to do is to consider both options because we feel so that we may need that additional time to provide uh, in-depth training and support for teachers as well as for staff members. Uh, we really wanna go deep instead of trying to do uh, everything within three to three and a half days. This would allow us more time. So um, again, the model, if you will, is the same as it relates to the AADB schedule. It's just that one begins, one calendar begins on the 9th and the other begins on the 14th. Um, nothing has changed in reference to our goals around attendance. We will be taking attendance um, daily. The expectation is that students are in school as well as staff members supporting students. Again, we want to make sure that we do have family cohesiveness regardless of what grade your child is in, or if you have a child that's in elementary, middle, and high school, we want to link those students together so that if your students are A students, all students will be A students in that family. So that is something that we are working toward. Um, these are other planning assumptions that we have. I believe I've talked about several of these previously, so we have not changed anything um, in this regard. Uh, the thinking is that we will be able to provide synchronous learning um, to the greatest extent possible, and that's primarily going to probably be at your secondary um, level um, to ensure that those students have the support that they need. Um, and again, we will continue to um, move forward as outlined here in the area of transportation, food services, as well as facilities. So what are next steps? So one of the major next steps is that the board uh, is scheduled to take action on the plan on Monday the 27th. Um, after that, we will begin to review policies that need to be modified or adjusted or suspended um, to support the implementation of the, of the plan. Um, there will be further communication with staff and community. So we will be communicating and implementing a survey for teachers as well as families so that we can try to better gauge, if you will, uh, what individuals um, thinking is around the next steps. Um, do I want to look at the blended model, brick and mortar every other, every two days or two days out of the week, or do I want to consider um, the cyber academy? So you'll see here that we are planning on um, doing some additional investment in the cyber academy, and we need to do that in order to support the full complement of grades. And so there will be a process that families we'll be able to say to the district, yes, this is something that I want you to consider. There are gonna be some um, requirements along with that when you um, look at 
being a part of the Cyber Academy, and that will be our line. We'll have to continue to update our facilities, as you can imagine, to make sure that we are ready at the 100% level uh, before the first day of school for students. And so these are some of the next steps that we will be taking um, after Monday. Um, and so again, if you've seen this chart before, this just outlines all of the work that's been done over the months of June and July. And believe it or not, we're almost at the end of the month of July and we're now at the board business meeting beginning on the 27th. And then we're gonna begin with the implementation on the 29th. And I would tell you that that's where the real work comes with implementing the actual plan. So I'm going to stop the share and um, open up um, a dialogue with our um, group and try to address questions directly from you guys. And then um, we'll see if there are any questions from our attendees. And so Pam, I see that um, Felicia has her hand raised as well in coffee. So why don't we start with them since they are panelists? I'm sorry, I'm hearing some feedback. Okay. <clears throat> I'll read the questions that were in the chat first and then go to the raised hands. Is that all right? No, I want you to do the reverse because the raised oh, okay. hands are all the panelists. And so we have Felicia Robbins. Well, these are panelists too who, who posted something in the chat. All right, let's go to the hands raised. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Hi, Felicia. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so just to be clear, from last week's uh, model you proposed, this new model, um, there's not going to be a change in October. It's going to continue to be AA two days a week um, throughout the school year? Yes. That is, yes. Yep. That is the plan. Now, obviously, if we get direction or the governor says we're shut down, then we'll have to modify. But yes, this would be what we're starting with going through the year. Okay. And I just had another question. Um, are all of the school districts within Delaware County following the Chester um, County guidelines? That is, yes. Short answer is yes. Um, keep in mind that all districts may have to make some modifications based upon what's happening within their district. So I will share with you Chester County guidelines do indicate that you could have three feet, but if you do three feet, you must wear masks. They speak to the fact that if you're six feet, you, you know, you, a mask is optional. Um, some districts have the ability to provide more space or have more space so they can have students in school with three feet. Um, we don't have that flexibility. Um, in order for us to have students in schools and provide for six feet space, we have to do half and half. We have to split the population in half. Um, with only having one middle school and one high school, we just don't have that many options as far as buildings are concerned. But the short answer is yes, but they are making modifications to support their buildings and what they have in their infrastructure. So like, for example, and I'll give you another example, like Upper Darby, and I'm approximating maybe has like 12,000 students. It's a much larger footprint that they have to deal with than some of the other districts in Delaware County that may have four to 5,000 students. Okay. Is, is there a reason why we're going with um, Chester County as opposed to any other county, say Montgomery? That's what the, the um, Delaware County um, Council contracted with Chester County to provide health services support for this county and for our schools. And so that's why we are um, working with that particular um, health department. Okay. I can also add on that, um, Delaware County also doesn't have a health department and that's part of the reason why too. Well, I'm aware of that, but I wanted to know that why we were going in Chester as opposed to say another county. Yeah, well, that's the reason why we don't have a health department. So they contracted with Chester County um, versus not doing anything at all. Okay. And I guess no one would know what what made them contract with that one as opposed to another one. If there were any pros and cons to any other. You, if you don't, you know. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Sure. Um, let's go to Rafi. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Um, 
uh, one, thanks for following the science, right? And thanks for following the experts. Um, you know, not everybody's doing that right now. So uh, we do appreciate that. Um, as far as the, the parent-facing communication that sounds like is going out next week, can you give us a little insight of what that's going to look like? Um, just in talking with parents, I think there's some possible concern that it might be be confusing right like of which choices and what do I get with this value meal versus the other one right like like what what will I get what won't I get what are the um the deadlines and how do I do it um is is that kind of going to be on like a one pager with you know some you know clear bullet points what's that going to look like um it's still in development and um, we are open to obviously suggestions, but from my viewpoint, I like one pagers. Um, it's like, what is it that I need to know as a parent? Yeah. Um, and so one thing I can ensure you is that the plan is for all of our instructional programs to be the same regardless of if you're in cyber or if you're at, or if you're in a brick and mortar. Um, and so that will be a constant across the board. Um, I think Obviously, we will give people ample time um, to complete or provide us with feedback and information on the survey. And it would be like something really short, maybe three to five, seven questions max. Um, it would probably be, to my knowledge right now, database driven so that we can capture information from parents. And we would be able to continue to stay in contact with them because we are going to have two, if you will, streams running, um, maybe simultaneously, and we have not actually define this piece yet, but we will have the Cyber Academy and then we'll have your traditional, um, I call it brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make it as easy and as simple as possible for families. So I think the first thing and the main thing is that your instructional program will remain the same, regardless of what option you may prefer. And our goal is to try to make sure that we can accommodate the request that's being made, because obviously we need to have staff in place to support those families. Right, um, and then, or to support those students, and so. Clarifying question, if I if I might, the, the AABB format, um, can can you confirm that? So, if if my child has class on Monday and Tuesday in one week, is it chances are that the next week it'll be on different days? That, that, that's what the AABB format means, right? No, sir. So, okay. in the actual calendar, we wanted to make sure that students were in school on, on the actual same day. And so in an effort to do that um, with our calendar, we made sure that the days were the same. So I'm going to share my screen again because I think that that's an important question. Um, and I may not have done a good job of explaining that. So do you see this up again? Um, you'll see the options. And I'm just going to go to option two. Can you see that? Yep. OK. So you'll see AA, and this is September. So September 14th and 15th is AA. So these students are always in school on Monday and Tuesday. You'll see the same follow for the 21st and the 22nd and the 28th and the 29th. We received lots of requests from families that said, if we're going to be doing partial days, can it be the same day every right. week? Because it just helps with daycare. Right. So that follows in September. It follows in October. It's the same for November. And obviously we have to take into account for holidays and times that we're out and then you have the winter break. But that same process follows through so that families can plan appropriately. Got it, thank you. Sure, sorry for that miscommunication. All right, um, I think Malik, Lashinda is next uh, pair. Mr. B Coach, it's M Shinda. I've been letting y'all pronounce my name incorrectly M. enough. Shinda. Thank you so much but, for correcting me. <laughs> but my only question is, are we still gonna have um if your child has a one on one, is a one on one still gonna come them days? Or are we not contracting one on ones this this year? Like how is that gonna work? We are contracting with them, ma'am. If that's a part of the child's um Plan, IEP. Then, okay. Yep, IEP. We're making sure that you meet those requirements, most definitely. Thank you for asking that question. And another question was, um, what if you have a child that's coming into the district that needs to be tested? How are they going to do the testing when they're only there two days a week? Like, how are they going to see what services they may need? Right. I have a child that fell through the cracks. And so now we're really going to be starting all over again for my new child that's coming into the district. 
Okay. So um, that assessment or, or testing will be done uh, upon entry. We don't see that changing in the, the way in which or when we would actually be doing that assessing. So that would happen when students um, arrive. And if I have a child that is, I guess he's considered special ed, will he be four days a week and just be off one day a week so my other child will only come eight, eight days? That's going to be based upon the child's needs. So we're actually specifically looking at what's in the plan, what the child needs, and then we are ensuring that we're meeting the child's needs. So we will be actually, if you will, doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with those families to make sure that they understand how we are supporting I don't want to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like you like this. I know this place. <laughs> it, would, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be me personally, but that's okay. I understand. You sure? Because I know we you know I come there. They ain't tell you I'm trouble. They ain't warn you about me. <laughs> it's all good, man. I, I I am here and I exist to serve and support your children. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a, I'm a click off from it. I'm gonna click back in. I got a clock in for work. All right. Take care. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> it looks like Miss Brown has her hand up. Miss uh, Bookman. Okay. Good evening, Miss Brown. Good evening. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, my question is, um, being a parent of a um, child that's full-time autism support and who has major transition issues, um, as it is, he's transitioning from Alden, and he's not the only one. There's quite a few kids coming from Alden over to the middle school. I want to know what is the plan for those kids who have never been in the middle school? They've worked with the same staff for four years. Um, I just would like to know what's the plan as far as orient and orienting them into the, the middle school. So um, one of the things I can share with you is that the administration at the middle school, um, in my opinion, is top notch. And I know that they um, are working on or will have in place um, a specific transition plan for students. They will be, we will be working with special education as well to make sure that we're able to support those students realizing what their needs are. So it may be that there's a time, a special time set aside okay. for, um, for families to, um, I'll say, communicate and work with the administration at the school to make sure that we are supporting the student. There may be an opportunity for the student to actually spend some time or looking at or being able to see what is my new, I'll say, way of coming to school. What does that look like? So right, that that's not, what I'm... Yes, right. so, that is not, so that it's not so new to the student on right. day one. Right. So right. We, will be, we will be looking into those um, items, man, and making sure that we're communicating directly with you okay. um, to, support, to support those students. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Is it, uh, let's see, Pam, I don't think I see any other hands. So why don't we go to the questions in the chat? Okay. Uh, Mr. Houston wants to know, has there been more talk of how teachers or schools will enforce mask wearing? Um, I wouldn't say that there's been more talk about that. What I will say to you is that um, obviously we're going to share with our families the mandate from the State Department of Health um, because that is not only for schools, that's for everywhere you go. So I am hopeful that by the time that school starts in September, Families have already taken measures in place to follow or to ensure that they are meeting that mandate. So just like when we go to the Walmart, the McDonald's, the Target, church, wherever it is that we may go, hopefully we're already wearing our masks. So requiring people and asking people to put on a mask when you come to school should not be something that's new. It should be a part of the normal by September if this is something that we've been doing. Um, obviously, we will continue to encourage families um, to follow the mandate, and that's what we're going to do. But I will also tell you, yeah. I do not want to have... They go back early, and then we get done last. I do not want to have... Yeah. Um, Mashinda, can you put your... Thank you. Um, I also want to make sure, though, that we are not suspending loads and boatloads of students because of that. So I think there are ways in which we can work with families, but at the same time, we are going to definitely make sure that we enforce the mandate that's been passed to us from the state. So I just wanted to uh, back up. I don't know. You couldn't see me. My camera's not working. I tried to raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. But, um, 
but the deal is um, that we understand, like going out in the public recently, right? Going out, I just, I'm running into students and children who um, just don't want to do it. Like parents who don't feel like they should make their kids do it. Um, put mad, They put their mask on their chin, not over their mask or, or over their nose or over their mouth or those types of things. And I, I feel like we're in a situation where we, we got to have a plan for, you know, worst case scenarios, so to speak, you know, and it's like, yeah, it should be commonplace, but we just know that's not the way it's going to go. Like we understand that as educators and what we deal with on a regular basis on, on different rules that are already in place. Right. And so, and so what I would say is that I don't want to make a carte blanche statement that applies to everyone. We're going to deal mm -hmm. with those situations on a case by case basis um, and move forward accordingly. Okay. Okay, Ms. Dawson <clears throat> said, have we considered putting the ninth and 10th graders together at Cypress Street to cut down on the amount of students at Green Avenue? We have looked at all of the space and we, we would not be able to do that. Um, so we've looked at the capacity utilization of all of our buildings and um, we need to maintain the use of the sites as they are to um, try to ensure the distancing to to the greatest extent possible. And Ms. Hall has a question. Thank you. You're welcome. We've been talking a lot, or we did last week, about um, the children and their um, emotional needs and that kind of thing. As uh, the parent of a couple of elementary school students, I know that we're always concerned about them having breaks in between having to really work on their classwork. And a lot of times that includes going to recess, going to gym class, going to the lunchroom. And if they are in the same classroom, how does a, a phys ed teacher push in? And how can we make sure that they get enough physical stimulation that they will be able to focus on their lessons? Well, I am hopeful that our physical education teachers will be innovative. Um, if they come in to push in. Um, we also know that the research says that students can go outside. Um, being outside is good. So um, again, principals will make accommodations accordingly based upon that population of students that's in their building. So I don't see being outside not being an option. I see that as a viable option. Um, we do know that in most cases, um, students will probably be eating in the cafeteria. But that is, a, that is another form of, I guess, movement, if you will. So when I say in the classroom, we're going to be spending the majority of the day in the classroom, but obviously there's still going to be move, some movement um, as necessary. And so again, we will be working with schools on their plans as it relates to what it will look like, let's say, in Ardmore, what it will look like in Bell Avenue, et cetera. Because again, each school's layout is totally different. And so we will be working with those principals to actually focus on the implementation of their plans while making sure that we're following the health and safety guidelines. I'm sorry, I guess I missed that. They will be able to go to the cafeteria. They won't be eating lunch in their classroom? Probably not, students okay. probably will not be. But again, that's our thinking. The guidelines is lunch and breakfast to the greatest sense possible. Breakfast will probably be in the classroom. Lunch probably will be not because obviously teachers need that 30 minute break. And so what does that look like? By us splitting the population in half, we believe that we can accommodate students in the cafeteria, social distance style. And again, you know, some schools may do something a little different. They, some schools may also utilize the auditorium if there is an auditorium um, for lunch. So again, it's going to look different and it may look different at every school building because again, the layout and the, and the, and the physical space is different. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, Ms. Richard, Ms. Richards has a question. Are parents going to be asked to sign a waiver which indicates that the school and school board aren't liable for children contracting this disease? Um, it's interesting that you asked that question. I had a conversation today with our solicitor. Um, we are not going um, to ask uh, parents to sign uh, a waiver uh, that was not uh, recommended. Um, our solicitor did inform us that um, we are not or would not be, if you will, um, 
at fault in the event that a student contracts COVID because it's no guarantee that that occurred in the actual school building um, or during school time. Um, but that's, that's our um, direction right now from our solicitor that we would not be asking parents to sign a waiver. Ms. Malik, do you have another question? If you can hear me. I heard you. I, okay. I do have one question. So on the days that kids aren't in school, are y'all still providing lunch or is that on us? Students will have lunch on the day that they're out of school. Yes, we will provide them with that. It will be like a um, grab and go type meal. Um, and I believe um, on our website, we give you examples of the types of um, food that students will be eating. It will be nutritious uh, meals um, that students will be receiving. You mean like we get now from the, the where will we actually be picking them up from our own school come September? I can't speak to what you get now. Mr. Cuff, do you know um, specifically what they're doing or what will be a difference? I believe that I, I believe the difference would be that what you're picking up now, in some instances, may be hot meals. I think what's going to go home are going to be pre-bagged cold meals. Um, okay. Um, there may be the mixture of the turkey sandwiches or the sun butter sandwiches with fruit, vegetables, and snacks as well. So there may be variations okay. uh, on, on that line. All right. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, Ms. M Shinda. <laughs> and, um, another thing I do want to share with you guys, because I just received an email, um, Ms. Brown. This goes back to the question you were asking me. Um, I, did, I was just informed that the middle school is um, working on making um, visitation appointments for new autistic support and life skills students. Uh -huh. So I just got confirmation that that is something that's being worked on right now. That's great news. Thank you. Sure, ma'am. You're welcome. Ms. Dawson. So my question is just about, um, honestly, we're at the high school. I love our teachers. Um, and as an alumni, I love working now being able to work with our teachers. But I know that they work really hard to make sure that they're prepared. And I know you said that there are um, some trainings. What are those trainings going to look like for them? Like, are we getting someone who is trained in working in the cyber environment for teaching to train them? Or are we doing like an in-house training? How are we properly preparing them to go if they're doing the cyber academy? How are we properly preparing them to teach online? Because it is, it, there's a difference. No, it is a difference. And so based upon the population of folks that want to do that, we are going to be utilizing um, folks who have experience with the cyber world um, to provide them with some training. Um, the online piece will definitely be, which I'm saying online because there will be some portions of online for our traditional brick and mortar house teachers, if you will. They will be getting, excuse me, training from those people who have done some of that work. Um, and we do have people in our district who've done that work. Um, although they may now be in the district, they have done that type of work previously. So we will be providing training in that arena. We're also gonna be providing training on social emotional learning and we also are going to have sessions on race, equity, class, um, and um, social justice. So those are some of the areas that we're going to be covering during our professional development um, sessions. Perfect. And when's, their first, when's the teacher's first day back? Uh, I believe it is August the, 20, August the 31st. Okay. Is that correct, team? Yes, everybody say yes. August 31st. Now, new teachers would come on the 27th and 28th of August because they have new teacher induction. Okay, thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Um, was it, are there other questions, Ms. Bookman? Uh, Ms. Richards. And I think it's Richardson. No, it's no. Richard. There it's, is a Richardson. It's yeah. Lisa Richardson okay, and Jill. Okay. I'm sorry, thank you. Oh, that, that, hi, my question is, I remember, um, I think it was like a last week or the week before one of the meetings, you were saying that Cyber Academy isn't going to be for the elementary school kids, like the kindergartens and first graders. That was is that, now that, true. My understanding? 
That is now changed, ma'am. It is going to be K through 12. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Some attendees have questions. Um, M. Sharice. On the day students are off, can there be an option for students to log in by way of Zoom or through phone to get a gist of what is being taught as well? Self-paced instruction did not work well <clears throat> for one of my two high schoolers. And she is a senior, so we want to make sure she graduates this year. So the difference between what happened last year and this year is that we are actually focusing on teaching new content when students are in the building. So on those A days that's or B days, that's when you will be getting new content. On that Wednesday, when we are providing support, follow-up, enrichment, um, extension activities for students, that will be a time when all teachers will have, as I call it, student support hours to provide additional support for students. So there would be limited um, times, in my viewpoint, when um, students would have to learn new content by themselves. Um, and I, I believe that's what the person is getting at with the safe, self-paced instruction. And so my thought is, and this is just a recommendation, if that is something that you know may not work well for your child, my thinking is, okay, that would be a student who would probably be in the brick and mortar setting, um, not necessarily on a cyber academy. Although cyber academy would have synchronous learning as well as some time when students are doing things on their own as well. Last year, only one Chromebook was given per family, even with multiple children. Has this changed? Yes, it has changed. Every student will have a Chromebook um, for the 2020-21 school year. Have there been discussions about how the senior class experience will be? How would this senior class year look with regards to college prep and college connections and other senior activities? Glad you asked that question. Um, in a previous meeting, I, I did state that in the month of September, I am hosting a superintendent senior seminar or session. Um, I'm actually meeting with all seniors because I want to find out myself specifically from them what it is that they want to see happen this year um, as it relates to senior activities, college prep experience or college experiences so that we can make sure that we are responsive to what the young people want. I firmly believe that our young people can provide us with um, a lot of guidance. They can also provide us with ideas and suggestions on what they see um, that would work. And so I wanna make sure that we as a school district are responsive um, to the senior class. I think they have experienced a lot being um, juniors, having had to leave the building uh, toward the end of the year for the last quarter and then just wondering to themselves, you know, what is my senior year going to be like, given that they probably had friends who were seniors and saw what their friends experienced this past year. So that's what we're going to do in terms of reaching out to them. Um, there will probably be a lot of virtual um, opportunities for students as it relates to college or college um, visits or seminars, et cetera. So we have had, or I've had, had uh, about two conversations with some colleges just on what does that look like for next year if you aren't coming into our buildings, how do students get that opportunity? If students aren't traveling to your site, how do they get that opportunity? The more information is to come on that, but I will definitely be reaching out to seniors in September. What happens if a child misses one or both days they are to be present in person? Will it be marked as an absence and can they make up their work virtually? Say that one more time, if they miss the days that they are... To be in school, uh, present in person. Right. So from my perspective, um, we, are, we should be doing some follow-up. Um, so that could be something that a teacher is doing on Wednesday um, to say, hey, Eric, you weren't in school. You need to make sure that you have this information. Where were you? Um, that, that will be an expectation. And you definitely need to follow up with students. I'm going to strongly encourage families not to have their children missing days that they should be in school. We're requiring in this hybrid model that your child's in, in the building 
two days a week, two days out of the week. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be doing or not having school assignments and work to be completed. They will, but the in school or in school building requirement, I should say, is at this point two days a week, unless your child has some additional um, supports or services that are needed. And in that instance, your child may be in school for four days. Will cyber be AA and BB days also or five days a week? Right now, the thinking is it's going to be um, five days um, because, again, it's no requirement for you to be in a building. Um, and so more information uh, will be coming out in terms of the actual schedule. But our goal is to make sure that we're supporting the instructional program. So just like with students who are in, in the building, there may be a day where students are doing project-based learning in that they are completing a project. Um, and so it, the schedule may look a little different, but the goal is to ensure that students um, acquire and we are utilizing the same instruction platform, if you will. I also have two children in Ardmore Avenue. Where they're Will there be an orientation for students thoroughly addressing behaviors surrounding COVID-19? Example, play coughing on one another or licking hands and chasing one another. I work in a school, so I see this, I see this happening. Discussing what not to do and how strict would these policies be enforced? So I would say yes, there is going to be um, training and I would just say support of students in this regard around expectations. Um, in my mind, this is what we're spending a lot of our time doing probably that first and second week of school. Um, information will be provided and sent out um, to families, but at the same time, we know that we're going to have to do some stuff inside of the building. Um, I am sure that each principal will be implementing their guidelines around safety and their protocols. Um, and so, yes, um, to answer that question. Okay. The panelists have any more questions? So uh, I don't have a question, but I, um, I wanted to, someone talked about um, the PD uh, professional development for teachers. I'm going to give you guys a resource in the, in the chat that is just pretty awesome. It's not just for teachers, it's for parents and other students. And it deals with a range of uh, topics that include um, mental health, it includes math, fraction, science, just travel. And you also talked about like college um, tours and there's some tours that are on here. It's not college tours, but there's different tours. So I'm just gonna put that in the chat for you guys. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to ask that Ms. Seward, if you would make sure that you get a copy or um, highlight or at least copy that um, information that Mr. Houston is going to put in the chat. It's called WideOpenSchool.org. And thank you, Ms. Bookman, for putting the, um, oh no, I think the person wanted an email address that they can send questions to. Yes, I put it, school opening that at the, okay. yes. school opening at wpsd.k12.pa.us. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, cyber cyber academy information will probably be shared next week. Um, we're having some transitions within that uh, arena, but we will be providing some information out next week um, related to the cyber program. And again, we, we need to, uh, you know, we don't want to get in front of the board of directors. So they first have to take action on our recommendations. And once that happens, then we're able to proceed with our next steps as the administration. Ms. Hall has her hand up. Um, is there, we're going to be starting AABB. And if for some reason we then have to shut down and go completely online. Is there going to be a plan for, do you have the first three weeks, these are the things we really need to get in place with our students in order to have success online, whether that be assessments or teaching them about technology, that kind of stuff. Is there like a plan just for the first two weeks, month, whatever? Yes, there will be a plan. 
Yes, ma'am. We've already had some preliminary discussions about that. So yes, there will be a plan because again, if students have a Chromebook, we need to make sure they know how to utilize it. So um, in the event that we get shut down, this is what you will be able to do. Um, my, my goal is to make sure that we also have, I would just say like a webinar that parents can easily go on to and view it and listen to it about just some common things that they would need to be aware of as well. So again, we are planning on having a, I'll just call it a resource page, if you will, for families. Um, and we are going to be supporting students when they um, show up. And for the ones who uh, are doing cyber, we already have orientation for those families. So we will do the same thing with them as well. And Ms. Richards? Hi, I'm not sure if this was um, already asked and answered, but I wanted to know how, how many cases do schools have to have before we're shut down? Like if a child comes and you find out that they have, uh, like if it's just one student in the school, is the whole school being shut down to be cleared or do we need at least five to 10 kids? That is going to be at the direction of the Chester County Health Department. Um, we are working with them um, in that regard. Um, they will actually be the ones, I'll just say, questioning or working with the families or the student and the family um, if a student suspects or indicates that they have um, COVID to guide our actions. I know that in the Chester County Health Plans document, their goal is not to shut down schools, but obviously that's going to be dependent upon what information is presented to them. Okay, I have an, another question. I have a, a child that falls under the um, the special ed and the IEP, but it's just for her speech services. She's also being tra uh, recently transferred out to a new school, but within this uh, William Penn School District. If we chose to do cyber, would she still get the services that she needs? Because the school she was going to was going to work with her all day with her speech. Like she would still receive her math, English and stuff, but it was geared more to tell that she would have more time with getting her speech under control. All right. So we would have to let you know based upon what her um, specific needs are. That might be something that we may not be able to do in cyber because it relates to speech. And I'm not sure not having had a chance to view the records whether or not um, it requires someone to be with the student um, with speech because as you could imagine it may be could be more of a challenge when you're in a virtual situation. Okay, thank you. Sure, you're welcome, ma'am. Miss Beatty, I apologize if this was already answered because I did get on a little late, but how is truancy going to be treated? Will there be any way different now that we have these other um, things going on or basically you're expecting kids to either log in or report the same amount of days as they did before? We are expecting students to log on and we are expecting students to be um, in attendance. Um, we are looking at all of our policies and we'll be in our presentation, that was one of the next steps that we will be um, looking at as it relates to, do we need to modify our truancy um, guidelines? Um, because obviously we wanna make sure more so now that we see our students and that we know that our students are following or at least engaged in the learning. And we have another question in the chat. Will there be unplugged activities included either during the three home days or in the cyber program? The elementary kids especially are not used to being in front of a computer all day. Right. So there is going to be a schedule. Um, that we have to help families or give suggestions to families. I agree and I'll be perfectly honest, some days I'm zoomed out. Um, so I cannot imagine um, sitting in front of a computer all day long for six or seven hours. I think that's a bit much. So there, there, there will be some recommended schedules that we provide for families and we will be utilizing them as well just to make sure that we're able to support students because we realize that there's a level of fatigue um, that does set in at some point. What support is going to be provided for single parent homes that work full time <clears throat> to assist with having children log in during the school day? 
when those students come um, to school or are part of the orientation for the in, 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 for the brick and mortar schools, that will be something that we will be working through with them. This is how you log on. This is how you access the assignments, et cetera. Um, even if you're in cyber, thinking is that you will have an orientation um, that may be virtual, but you will have an orientation. So again, going back to I think a question earlier, we are going to be focused on um, students who need assistance, making sure that they understand how to access uh, the resources that are available for them. I don't see any more questions, Dr. B. Coates. Okay. Um, are there any, anything else other than that questions anyone want to share a comment? Um, Mr. Kemp, are you still with us? Oh, you're muted. I'm, okay. Did you want to, um, I know that Mr. Kemp previously, I just wanted to share with the team that uh, he had a wealth of knowledge in various areas around, I'll just say SEL, um, social emotional learning, et cetera. Um, and we did provide Mr. Kemp with some, with some information based upon um, some thinking that we had around um, social emotional learning. Did you want to share anything with the group or did you want to give us any feedback or guidance about that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> um, I got a chance to look at some of the different things, the second step information um, for, it looks like for the middle school. Um, <clears throat> and then I looked at, uh, it looks like, um, uh, let me go back to it. Um, the home and community school classroom. Does that sound familiar? Uh, social and emotional learning? Yes. All right. Um, just a couple of quick uh, recommendations and working with a number of school districts and looking at this, um, and especially around the, the pandemic, some things to add in. So I see a lot of self-awareness, um, <clears throat> uh, social awareness, uh, relationship skills. Um, I think you need to put something near and talk, talking about uh, looking at coping skills and um, helping um, youth identify what may be their um, frustrations or even their triggers um, during this pandemic. Um, there are a lot of things that uh, is not the normal for people anymore. Um, and I think helping them to identify what those things that may be frustrating for them and then teaching them the coping skills to deal with that. And I, I certainly can work with you some more offline if you need some additional information around this. Um, and then I looked at, you know, when are you looking at? So what I normally do is we do a grid. So we talk about when we're first introducing that um, technique to the individuals or that part of the, the curriculum. And then we talk about what time frame are we doing reinforcement and then we look at what time we should look at the individual sort of mastering that skill. Um, because the ultimate goal is you want them to be independent with some of these skills that they're learning at the school as well. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I know that Ms. Seward is on the line, is on the Zoom. And so um, I will ask her to definitely follow up with you so that we can um, further dialogue about some of those suggestions. Because we definitely want to utilize your expertise. No problem. And just so that everyone knows, um, I did also reach out to Mr. Houston in terms of supporting us in the area of um, training in, in, the, in, the arena, in the arena of Google. So um, Mr. McKay will probably follow up on that conversation at the appropriate time just to see how we may be able to leverage um, that support as well. Um, and I do want to also thank um, others who may have commented to me in the chat um, about additional help that they may want to provide via home and school um, and other organizations. So thank you guys very much. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. And there are two hands raised now. Ms. Richards and then Ms. Mishinda. Hi, um, the, my, my question was actually put inside the chat, but it uh, uh, reads, what will be done for families that do not have internet but do not want their children in school physical, physically? So uh, we, we do have um, 
some resources um, to help families that may not have internet access. And so um, as we learn of, of those um, incidents or issues, we, um, we do have some resources that may be able to support families. Um, we actually, I was actually in a meeting, I think it was yesterday, um, and the, um, there's a Delaware County Foundation that wants to potentially help to provide some support um, in that arena as well. So um, there are resources that we know for sure that we'll be able to utilize to support those families. Ms. Machinda? Sorry, I'm here. I have a question. I, it may be off the thing. How, I'm trying to figure out how to word this correctly. How worried are we in our district worrying about our kids going to a different cyber school? How is that going to affect certain things? Because you know there's several cyber, cyber schools in Pennsylvania. What I would say to that is um, the William Penn School District um, is going to have and um, has expanded or will be expanding their cyber school um, opportunities. And so we feel very strongly that we're able to support students academically, socially, emotionally as well, um, be they in a brick and mortar uh, building or in a cyber academy. So cyber is, uh, if, if that's what the family wants, uh, I'm going to encourage all families to register and check us out. Um, we will be having more information that's coming, and I don't believe that you will be disappointed with what we will be able to offer your child or children. I, I have another question, and I'm only saying this because I work in a school district. Suppose I, su I'm going to say this. Suppose um, a family signs up for cyber, but then they decide to send their kids to school. Do you send the kids away? Like, how does that work? Well, ideally, um, if it's something that you sign up for, we would like for you to stay enrolled in either traditional, meaning brick and mortar, or cyber for a, a quarter at a minimum. Um, okay. because obviously, we need to make sure that we're able to support the movement, keeping in mind that if you want to go into the building, we also are trying to still maintain social distancing and those requirements. And the same thing on the cyber side, it's a different issue. You need to make sure that you would have the appropriate staff to support the students that are So that's the, that's the initial thinking. Obviously, if there is, um, I would say, an exceptional uh, circumstance or something that is just really life-threatening, then obviously we're going to look at that information and take that into account. Okay, I'm just asking only because I, I, I work for a different district. And unfortunately, in our district, we have all-day kindergarten. But this is the district that I work for, they don't have all-day kindergarten. So, like, I know one of the young ladies was asking about space and all that. So some of the districts don't have all-day kindergarten. So they have that extra, a little extra space here and there. But, you know, in our district, we have all-day kindergarten, you know. And, like, you're saying it's AA. And this is times is it's going to be really tricky <laughs> come September. That's all I can say. So. Thank you, Miss Thanks, Dr. B. Cool. <laughs> Ms. Richards. I think this might be my last question. I'm not too sure. I'm sorry. Um, when do you think, uh, well, when will you guys start distributing computers so that um, everybody can start on time, whether they're going to be doing cyber learning or whether they need a computer for um, school in general, or are you not giving Chromebooks out to those that need them to work, do schoolwork at home? Students will receive the Chromebooks um, brick and mortar um, when they arrive in school. Um, with cyber, there are um, procedures that we have in place for families to obtain their, um, their equipment and their orientation in time for the start of school. And Ms. Hawk posted a comment. I know we all want the best for our kids and a lot of this we just can't wrap our heads around. I hope we'll have some patience with each other as we all navigate this. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. 
Um, I would say, you know, a superintendent flexibility, being nimble, um, and also um, ensuring that we continue to communicate and always keep the doors of um, communication open are, are very um, important skills that we all need to exhibit. Um, and I want our community to know that, at least under my leadership, um, I am dedicated to supporting the parents and your students. And we're going to do everything in our possible um, control to make sure that we are um, putting forth a quality instructional program given the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Um, and so that is my um, commitment to this district and to the students that we serve. Ms. Dawson? You were ending that so nicely and then a question popped in my head, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> um, right. I know we're all trying to go, but just as you go and you talk to the board and we present, if we could just kind of stress as parents and I'm sure community members, that we make sure that we are making this decision, but we're executing it quickly. The one thing that's really important, we lost a lot of learning time at the end of last year and it's no one's fault. It just kind of happened and we had to scramble to put it together. And we appreciate everything that every staff member and teacher does in this district. But moving into 2021, the last thing we want is to be two weeks behind because now we need people to get computers or you know, we're not fully ready because the trainings weren't ready. It's just really important. Um, and we know that you guys are working your butts off to make sure um, that this is getting done. But from a parent standpoint, the last thing we want is more learning loss. Um, whatever we can do and as quickly as we can get it pos um, done so that they get what they need moving into 2021 is just, I have a senior. <laughs> I love her, I need her to get out. <laughs> Like she needs to go to college. Um, so it, it's really important though, all jokes aside, that we just kind of make sure that we're on top of it and that we don't delay the timeline anymore just so we can execute. So if you could stress that for us, that would be really, it would be greatly appreciated. So Ms. Dawson, I am going to stress that. And I also want to come back to this document that's been shared. I think you, are, do you guys see this? Yes. So you'll note that you know, this does outline our work that we've been doing. You'll also note here that there's a completion date of August the 21st. So that is well before the first day of school. And just to just be as transparent as I can, my goal is always to be done ahead of the ball. So to me, being on time is being early. And so that's what I am pushing and striving for. So yes, decisions will be made hopefully on the 27th. I'm sure our board will take action. Um, and we will go right into the next phase of um, implementing, implementing our work. Um, and it is a lot of work to get done between now and that period of time, but we are committed to make sure that it happens and it happens effectively. Um, and so there may be times when I reach out to some people on this, on this Zoom and say, hey, can you guys help us with X or help us with Y if that's where we find ourselves? So, Again, I greatly appreciate what you are doing. I'm glad that the board identified you um, as people to guide and um, direct us. So thank you all very much. I greatly appreciate it. Um, it looks like there's another question, Ms. Bookman, in the chat. Yes, from Mr. Martinez. He wants to know, are there any needs for the district from parents? There are a lot of parents who want the best for our children with resources and connections. Is there anything you need? Well, one thing I would say that we need, and I'm, and I'm going to read that as is anything that we need as the district. One is definitely um, support from families. And we need, when we send out our surveys, that's probably when I will be reaching back out to this group to ask you to, in as many venues as you can, encourage families to complete the survey. That's going to be important. Um, very important because that's going to guide a lot of our efforts. Um, if there are families that you know who have kindergarten students, rising kindergarten students that have not registered, please have them go through that process now so that we have that information and that we're ready to serve them on day one. Um, those are some things that come to my mind right now. Um, and for us to continue to communicate, if there are ways in which you think that we can communicate better with families, please let us know what they are. You all have an email address. Let us know. Um, you know, I've told Ms. Bookman that I am committed to in the month of August, I'm going to be beating the pavement. So 
So that means if I'm going door to door, asking people to complete their surveys, putting out flyers, those may be some things that I need you guys to do. Um, because again, this is a community effort. It's not just the William Penn School District, it is a community effort. And I firmly believe that if all of us are working collectively together, we can continue to move the dial forward in support of the children that we serve. And thank you, Ms. Bookman, for putting that email address up there one more time. <laughs> and I'll just say schoolopening at wpsd.k12.pa.us. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm just looking at the chat myself, Ms. Bookman, and I'm also looking at the panelists and the attendees. And um, I am going to again say thank you guys for your time greatly appreciate it um, we do have all of your contact information and we will continue to stay in touch with you as we move forward through this process and please stay safe and what's the last thing we're going to say wear your mask <laughs> <laughs> absolutely thanks a lot, and this heat. Yes. have a good night everyone be safe. thank you take care everyone good night have a good, have a good night everyone Stay nice. safe.